Um, I'll tell you people who haven't been so fascinated in recent days have been Wellington commuters who have been facing all sorts of mess-ups on the motorway because of a protest group, a protest group called Restore Passenger Rail, who have been uh, staging sit-ins and stuff on motorways that have been really disrupting commuter traffic. Some of them have been arrested and faced charges. They've been bailed on conditions they don't do it again, and some of them have gone and done it again. So who are this group? What are they on about and why are they messing up the traffic? I think those are all pertinent questions that we should be asking. And uh, James Cockle, who is a spokesperson for Restore Passenger Rail, this group, he joins us now to answer those questions, which I'm very, very uh, glad of. James, welcome to the platform. Thank you for being with us. Hi, Sean. Yeah, great to be with you. How many members are there in Restore Passenger Rail? Oh, it's hard to say. You know, we've got a. a Why is it hard to say, James? Well, because you know, it, it's a distributed, it's a distributed kind of thing. We've got a lot of followers on our Facebook page. Oh, yeah, but no, and, they aren't um, members. They're just people it, who follow you on Facebook. How many people in the group? Uh, well, you know, like I can't really, I can't really give out that kind of information. Why not? But what I think you're, you're. Why, why can't really you? Give, why can't you give out that information, James? Well, well, because you know that's. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I just have to give you a quick disclaimer, Sean. Um, I am actually on bail for um, for sitting on the road myself, and I am one of my conditions is that I cannot, um, you know, promote uh, or encourage those kinds of activities. So anything I like can that assure you that I'm not be, asking you. To, I can, just be can I assure you I am not running this interview for the purposes of promoting <laughs> or encouraging what you've been doing. So we got no yeah, conflict yeah, no. there, right? I, I'm not okay, going to be encouraging okay. you to break your bail conditions. And I don't think you'd be doing so by telling me how many people there are in your group. At this stage, I think there's around 200. Yeah, but... but you well, know, okay, and how, what do you base that what, on? Have you had 200 well, people at a meeting or on your phone group? Or is that Facebook yeah, followers? Because Facebook followers no, no. aren't members of your group. No, we've had around 250 to our meetings uh, across the country over the last couple of months. Okay. Are you associated with any other groups, like the Green Party, Greenpeace, Climate Action? No. No? Are you, members of, are you a member of any other protest groups or political organisations or environmental organisations? Um, me personally, I, I am I'm a member of other uh, organisations, yeah. Like what? Yeah, I'm a member of the Green Party currently. I'm a member oh, you of... Are a um, green, you're a I've, Green Party I've member. Involved with, yeah, okay. I've been involved with um, Extinction Rebellion in the past. Yeah, but, OK. But, you know, the, these groups are pretty... A lot of these protest groups are pretty amorphous, you know. They don't have a... a, a, a a membership as such, you know yeah, what I mean? So that's yeah. why it's a bit difficult to give you a Okay, so numbers. how many people involved in all... I'm, I'm sure you'll be wondering why no, we've not, taken such... No, no, I'm, sure, steps, I'm, Sean, I'm you know? sure I'm wanting like, to conduct an interview where I ask the questions, James. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm sure of. So let, let's let's just proceed on that, and I would hate, hate well, you to break your bail conditions, all right? No, so, I'm, I'm certainly not going to be doing that, but you've had me on here, and I'm, you know... I'm, I'm just curious as to why why these are the questions you're wanting to ask. You know, like what? Because I'm the what journalist. Is it you're wanting to find out. Because I'm right? the journalist. And, and look, stick with me. We'll get there. I promise. Okay. 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 All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> All right, James. So, James, this group. You can't tell me how big it is. Might be 250 people. Um, you're a Green Party member. You're an Extension Rebellion member. What is it exactly that you're after? Because I was quite surprised at the name of your group, Restore Passenger Rail. I wasn't aware that it had been removed. When right, I see when I see like um, the units going up and down the lines in Wellington, I'm thinking that looks a bit like passenger rail to me. I'm so glad you asked. Um, yeah, it's a, it's in the name. What we want, what we're demanding of the government is that they restore passenger rail to the same levels as around the year 2000. That means a genuine, affordable, accessible rail service right across the country. And, and in our demand, that would mean connecting from Auckland to Wellington, and then with side routes off from Napier, Tauranga and Rotorua, and then Picton to Christchurch, Dunedin and Invercargill with side routes off to Greymouth. That would connect 3.5 million New Zealanders in regular passenger rail across the country. It would mean that people have got the opportunity to travel who maybe can't afford, a, uh, you know, the petrol 
uh, or a car or a plane ticket. All right, that's great. So why don't you join a political party or lobby existing politicians for that sort of policy change? Because you have the privilege of living in a functional democracy and you can do that. Yeah, that's true, but we, we've tried all of those things and it hasn't worked. And, because and the other thing because is people don't agree with you and people don't agree with your policy. And that's, you know, you've got to suck that up, haven't you, in a democracy? Not that many people yeah. see the world the, the way you do. Yeah, yeah, you do, you do to a point. However, also in a democracy, there are large um, lobbying bodies that are that are in the um, ears of government, and the and people's ordinary people's voices don't get heard. And the other thing that that our so what are the large lobbying bodies do, that have been frustrating we, your attempts to change transport policy? We, well, there's, there's the big roading lobby, the big road builders, the big trucking lobbies. You know, we know that those that those groups have got the government's attention. And and the other thing that... that yeah, because they act within to, the rules and they act legally and they don't go and stop people getting to work, I guess. But part of a democ- I mean, protest has always been part of democracies. The suffragettes didn't make the differences that they made by by following the rules. They were hated in the in their day. You know, mm. we revere them now. We've got we've even got crossings with uh, Catherine. Man- I mean, with uh, sorry, Kate Shepherd uh, on the crossing. But in the, their day, those women were hated for what they yeah. did. Yeah. Well, you know? I guess I guess um, I don't know if they stopped people taking their kids to work, getting to work themselves earning their livings. It seems to me the protests that you're doing by disrupting traffic are penalising people who have nothing to do with the policies that you want changed. It seems grossly unfair, actually. It, it is really unfortunate that we're in a situation where the supporters of Restore Passenger Rail feel compelled to take these drastic actions. You know, they realise that these are extreme measures that they're going to, and they don't do it lightly. They, they feel that this is something that... That, that this is they've tried all of those other things available to them. They've signed petitions, they've gone on marches, they've joined political parties, they've joined NGOs and sent them money and donations, and, and the change hasn't been coming. And the other really um, critical part about this, um, you know, this movement is that it's also wanting the government to make good on its promise to finally tackle climate change. You know, and, and it, it, they've had five what years promise? and emissions are still going up. What promise? The promise, the promise the Prime Minister made when she was elected to, to tackle climate change. Yeah, that's only the government of the emergency. day. How's time at yeah. climate change impacting you, James? Well, it's impacting me... Apart from worrying you I, a little bit, clearly. Uh, I, I think of the young people that I know in my life, particularly some of the young women who are, not, are choosing not to have children because they know the kind of world that they're going to be bringing that child into and they're not going to do it because they understand what's coming. Is that how coming. climate change is they impacting you? They understand what's coming. That's one of the ways it's impacting me. Yeah. What other ways? One of the ways it's impacting me is understanding that the actions that um, countries like New Zealand and other wealthy nations across the world are taking are resulting in a, uh, a third of Pakistan being underwater and, and millions of people being out of their homes. You know, 30 million people out of their homes because of the actions that we, that, or the inaction that we've, ta- you know, chosen over Can the last 30, Can we just do that? Okay, that's really interesting. I didn't realise um, that what I'm doing in, in, in Wellington is putting someone out of, a, out of a home in Pakistan. Can you just take me through the logical connection yeah. there? It, it's the heartbreaking thing. It's really, it's it's really um, easy to not see it because we look outside and the and the, ch- the sun's shining and the grass is green and and everything seems and to be okay. And Wellington's not underwater, and yeah. we're having about the it's, same sort of weather we used to have, and you know. Well, not really, not really. Yeah, we've really. had flooding in in Nelson. We've had flooding. We've had flooding in Nelson before. We've had flooding before. Well, we've had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess if you're telling me that the climate isn't changing... Climate changes I, I, I every day. That That's we why can... we do a climate change report here on the platform. Oh, all right. Well, I, I don't know that... I don't know that I'm going to be able to convince you, but what I can say, and your, your listeners might be really interested to know, is that the scientists are telling us things are worse than we thought. You know, we are on track to be hitting two degrees... A lot of scientists are telling us that they're the not as well. Years. Right. Well, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know what to say about about that. I mean, well, the, the that, you'd have to agree the, with me. The, the lot of scientists saying it's not that bad either. Well, uh, you know, I, I just don't. 
I don't, I don't know what, where to go with that, Sean. I mean, well, well, that, you're yeah, telling look, me that you well, don't maybe think just say these issues real, are contestable. Then. But I just look. I don't see Wellington no. underwater. I don't. I, I see a lot of generalised claims about stuff. But then we look at other data and other information. And, you know, there's other stuff going on. Um, I'll tell you what I don't no, see. No, I don't, I don't see a reason. I don't see a reason for your sort of um, ev evangelical commitment to climate change or to worrying and scaring yourself about climate change. I don't see why that gives you the right to interfere with other people's lawful lives. Uh, well, I don't know that it does give me the right. I mean, I've been arrested for it, and that's that's the kind of commitment that, that supporters of this um, the support of Restore Passenger Rail have got, is that they're willing to go on the road, they're willing to be arrested for this because they see it that seriously. Now, I understand that you may not believe this, but if, if you want to understand that where these people are coming from, you know, no, I just wanted them to had, stop interfering with other people going about their lawful business. Well, we're, we're due to be at two degrees warming in the next 10 to 20 years. That's well, going to mean a gonna billion be. climate refugees. There isn't going to be, James. going to be 20 percent of this earth is going to be un become uninhabitable. No, it won't. You know? It, no, it won't, the, James. That's what the scientists are telling us. Because that's what, warming that's is what some reports on certain models <laughs> tell you, and they never <laughs> come true, James. Well, then, then why is it we're having two one, one in a hundred year events a year now? Why is it that we get two uh, weather, extreme weather events that are one in a hundred years in one year? Because the idea why is it that and, and, the, and the scientific stupidity of saying that's a one in a hundred year flood is ridiculous. And the fact is, do you know that, well, okay, then tell me what this, how come deaths from natural disaster are dropping year on year? Can you explain that to me? Well, well, I don't, I don't have the data on that. How so come I'm not food, how to, come food I'm production is going up year on, on year? Okay. How come infant mortality <laughs> is dropping year on year? How come world hunger is dropping year on year? How come death during, due to dehydration is dropping year on year? I, I just don't. I don't. I'm not you gonna, don't know. I'm not going to debate you on that because doesn't I don't sound have that to me like the planet's ending, James. I, it I, sounds I, like I it's getting I better. Refute. I'd refute the claims that you're just making. I, oh, I don't okay, know so, but when I refute from, your but... claims that the planet's going to explode into a ball of fire and no one should have any kids, I'm not allowed to do that. No, I'm James, not telling people not to What kids. I'm asking you to go for now from Restore Passenger Rail spokes, as the spokesperson, you guys have had your protest. Would you give a commitment to stop messing with other people's lives in future? I can't speak for what, the, what those supporters are going to do, but I can tell you when they believe that what we do in the next three to four years will determine the future of humanity, when they believe that tipping points are coming and we're starting to see so those they're delusional. Now, That's the problem. That, How do we negotiate when, with you? And that when we hit two degrees global warming, we'll see a billion climate refugees from 20% of the world. Yeah, which, but it just hasn't which, happened, it's no longer possible. It's no longer possible to live in those places. That's going to mean society collapse. Yeah, but it's That's not going to happen, back James. To you. It's, it's all just silly computer modelling, isn't it? It's going to come back to you and your family when those things happen. Where will those people go? How will we look after the, the ones that come here? How will we take care of them when we're not even able to take care of our people mm. today who are in poverty? Well, we are able. We choose not James, to. James, have you sought any treatment for anxiety or not? Because it sounds like you're <laughs> dreadfully worried. Of, well, in, anyone that's paying attention and listening to the information should be worried, yeah. and that's why we're getting. You know what? A lot of Wellingtonians things. are worried are about this. getting to work on time, getting their kids to school on time, Absolutely. when a bunch of idiots block the motorway. Well, these people blocking it uh, do it understanding that the, the disruption they're causing and they genuinely don't want to have to be causing this kind then of disruption. But well, the last time, what the last time we protested, you and I didn't have this interview. Mm -hmm. Those other things that we've been trying to do don't get reported. They no. don't get picked up, you know? No. So this is why people feel so strongly. This is why people feel this is the most important thing that they can be doing with their life at the Some moment. Some people do, Because James. they believe, they believe the things that I've just said. They believe that, yeah, yeah, the, um, that the, the, these climate changes are going to cause the destruction of our society. It's going to undermine the rule of law. No, you know, it's not. That, that's what people. That's what people believe. Well, we we have a difference of opinion on that. But yeah. That's why where these people are coming from, and that's why they feel so strongly. And you believe that is a reason that you can mess with other people's lives.
that, that I believe that's a reason. When I took the action I did, I believed that was a reason so strongly that it was a moral obligation for me to take that kind of action. All right. And look, I, you and know, I, okay, that, that's how you feel, and I thank you for being your honesty about that. I'm not going to question that that is your sense of conviction. I would just like to be you. able to f finish this interview by saying to Wellingtonians that you and your mates aren't going to mess with their days anymore. Uh, well, yeah, like, like I, I, I really do feel for people that are caught up in this, and I, you know, I, I'm, I'm genuinely sorry when it's disrupting people's lives. But these people that go and take these actions feel so strongly. What we'd love to do is get a conversation with the transport minister. We'd love to get him mm. to come out openly and say he supports passenger rail. You know, and I, I think it's a hugely popular demand, actually, even though these tactics are not popular. The demand is popular across the, the spectrum. Hey, James, of, of can all, I all ask you, that, that, that letting down tyres on SUVs things, were you involved in that? No. OK. Would you agree that was a step too far? Uh, look, I mean, I, I, think, I think it... Personally, for me, it would be a step too far, but I do understand why people feel compelled to do that kind of thing. All right. And, and look, I just want to come back to a question I asked you. In real terms, what impact does climate change, apart from all the anxiety, and you worry about other people not having kids, James, um, what impact has climate had, change had on your life in Wellington in the last five years? Well, it's a little bit like asking what, what impact cancer has on a person, isn't it? When well, it a person's kills you often. Well, if they it kills cancer, you often. It's it, pretty bad. It, it does kill, but, but while the person's feeling well, if they know they've got cancer and their doctor says, you know what, we've got to cut this bit out of you or, or you've got to give up smoking, the person feels okay. Mm. So at that point, it's not having any impact on their life but from their perspective. They, they feel all right. But they know in their mind, they know that it's going to kill them. As I said, so in what real terms has climate saying. change impacted your life? Because we all know that water levels in Wellington haven't risen. Okay, so what impact has climate well, change had on your life, day-to-day -day life, apart from the anxiety? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that, that's, like I say, that's, I feel it's similar to a, a person who's got cancer. It's, it's, they, know, they know what's coming, and it's extremely, you know, it's not just me that's suffering from anxiety from that. Many, many people are. You know, the young people, a lot of young people I talk to are terrified of what's coming and they're very angry with the older generations who've let it get to this stage. I've got a friend um, from Northland who couldn't get to work for a whole week because of flooding up there due to, you know, we, we can't attribute Yeah, we never had flooding climate before change, climate change, did we? we flooding flood. just never happened. Tell that to not, Noah. Not to this um, extent. James, not I, to think, this I thank you for your time. I hope that you and your friends do stop messing with other people's lives and that you can continue to hold true to your principles, um, whatever Thank they you, happen Sean, to be. I really appreciate your time. Really Anytime. appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, James. Bye. That is James Cockle from Restore Passenger Rail. He's a member of the Green Party and Climate Rebellion or Climate Extinction or whatever, and he's classic, isn't he? He's just your classic liberal protester. Uh, and he's worried, isn't he?